Hey everyone, Mango Seven Roll here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic Seven, and I guess this is an episode of what day is it? I completely forgot there was a stream today, so as such, I missed all the information. Uh, but we've got three new heroes here. It's a video we're gonna watch together. And I haven't seen any of these yet outside of uh, their design. So I'm pretty excited to see this out. There's also a new chapter, a side story. Um, we're getting a Cerise rerun at the end of the month. There's Alencia and Cece and Sermia as well banners. And there's also going to be Rylet and Sidom, I think, for the Mystics. Outside of that, it's all in a three stars. So let's take a look. Um, I think I'm going to summon for some of them tomorrow. I think so, just because I feel like I really want to get my hands on some new characters just to have some fun with, right? So, let's get watching here. <laughs> Let me turn sound up again. And of course, the two cool ones, uh, Yoon Ryun, uh, and the other one are probably light and dark. Type 2, piercing sword. Let me show you my real worth. Yoon Ryung, at your service. Yoon I'll Ryung, okay. That's a pretty cool name. I didn't, wasn't trying to pronounce it. This is what every character should do. They should say their name, right? Um, also, Anna Graves is a pretty good VA. Let me let me Google that name really quickly, and we can take a look at um, what's going on with those. So we'll put this in here. So I don't entirely know what she's known for, but I know I've seen her name before. Yeah, 75 credits. So uh, let's take a look here. So Final Fantasy VII Remake... Um, oh, she's Kisei already in this game. Princess Leia Organa, cool. Um, some people in Elder Scrolls. She's a demon hunter. Female voice, that makes a little bit of a sense there. Um, anybody, oh, Naoto Shirogane. So she's an old school VA, uh, being in something that long ago. Okay. That's probably why I remember from Naoto. So, uh, let's see the skills here. Will be the sword that protects you. Or not? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so uh Yun Ryun, Yun Ryung is a uh light tonight we can see here. 105 speed, 600 defense, pretty decent defensive stats, uh low attack of course. Um and she has some effectiveness. So she's going to be a debuffer of sorts, although that imprint is not helping anybody. I really wish, uh, just as a side note, before we get into these, I really wish they balance the stats of three stars and four stars to be in line with five stars. I really do. Uh, I don't think that's like a big enough deal right now to not do that. And I think the amount that it hinders usability of uh, three star units is just uh, too much, right? Like, I feel like even if they have good kits, their base stats are often. Um, Problematic. Okay, so Yun Ryung's skill 3 is a battle cry, raiser morale of all allies, increasing speed, and granting immunity for 2 turns. Both of those on a 4 turn cooldown is pretty sweet, and it's only a 10 soul um, burn. So if you're using this for manual, that's really good. Anytime um, something is 10 souls for a burn, that is fantastic. She also had a passive, so she's gonna have like a debuff on her passive or something? Right? Like they can't give her effectiveness. Sorry to always pause these. I wanna I wanna give you my thoughts as we go. They can't give her effectiveness um into her base stats and not have her and just have her skill one with debuffs, right? Okay, so, um, okay, seal 2, I thought it was a passive, but it wasn't a passive, so, oh, no, it's a passive, okay, after attacking four times, grants a barrier to all allies for two turns and increases CR by 15%, okay, that's not bad, that's kind of interesting, I like the idea here, and she gets quite a bit, uh, 30, 50% barrier strength off of this, and it also is based off of their HP, so you can build uh, Yun Ryung really, really fast. But that means her skill one has to be like defense down. That's the only thing you would want the effectiveness for to warrant it being in her valuable stats, right? Oh, she teleports. That's really cool. Oh, she just dual attacks. Yeah, okay. As I expected, 
Um, has a 65. Please don't be like 75. 70, yeah, 75 percent chance. I guess it is not bad to decrease if oh one turn two. That's not good. Um, and when used on the caster's turn, activates dazzling slash as an extra attack. So she has two debuffs on her skill one. Okay, that makes sense. Why she has effectiveness. Uh, I thought it wasn't really making sense. Um, the other thing to mention too is uh, it looks like with her passive here, right? Grants a barrier uh, after attacking four times. So her, even though her skill three doesn't attack, yeah, even though her skill three doesn't attack, it just means every um, three turns you're gonna be proccing uh, her skill two, right? Because you're gonna have lunging slash counting for two attacks, which is pretty sweet. I do like that idea. Um, no idea how good she's going to be, but that is pretty sweet. Yeah, and the other cute one, Hassel here. <laughs> Is of course dark. Let me show you my secret weapon. Are you the one who's been looking for me? I hope you're not the boring type who's obsessed with manners and etiquette. Okay, so we have like a bruisery, uh what was her name? Dawn Bennett. We have a bruisery style. Um not a bruisery, but like a rough and tumble style VA here. Um hasn't really done much oh has done boatloads <laughs> i was like wait why doesn't she have a picture usually they have pictures when stuff is done so this character has done infinity stuffs right uh lusamine for pokemon evolutions um elm edern from ruby or however you say that hey she's twizzly gum cookie in uh cookie run kingdoms i hate twizzly gum gummy cookie <laughs> this is so fun oh she's marnie our Arctzot, Arctozolt, and Wingle. She is all of the things. Haga and Azur Lane. Um, cool. So this is a very experienced VA. Even in Fairy Tale for seven years, sixty-two ep episodes of Fairy Tale. It is so insane looking at this. Like, if you think about how much this is so far, how many things we've scrolled by, we've still only hit uh, like a year and a half, right? Like, that's pretty good. She's somebody in Zombieland Saga, which I need to watch. Um, I'm looking for more games. It looks like she is very much for anime. Um, and a lot of it. <laughs> like, a lot of anime. Oh, Sino Alice I just saw. Did I see Sino Alice? I don't know. I, I'm looking for some like big names. Uller from Fire Emblem Heroes. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? God, look at all these. She is in everything. She's doing amazing. Look at look at how many of these like insane shows uh she is just kicking butt on this makes me so happy this makes me so happy this is not a cheap va you know or maybe it is and she just does all of the things i have no idea either way that's really cool i love seeing that um really cool voice for her fits her character so uh hustle you didn't say her name so i don't know how to pronounce it has uh oh it's another knight so weird uh, so a Dark Knight has way higher defense stats than the other one. Has about the same speed, I think, but it doesn't have the effectiveness. Um, so I'm guessing all the effectiveness went into defenses, which is probably better, and not the greatest imprint concentration. So um, Blade of Vengeance here is after an enemy counterattacks, increases CR of the caster by 20%, and increases the fixed damage of Swift Cut by 1,000. 1,000 is a lot. Uh, the fixed damage increase can stack up to four times. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I love that. I love that. That's really cool. And it goes up to 30% CR when somebody counterattacks. Punishing Strike is her skill 3. Attacks all enemies with a secret skill before increasing defense of all allies for three turns and increasing speed of the caster for three turns. That's a lot of speed for a long time. It is a five turn cooldown though, which is pretty big. Um, and this is kind of one of those ones where you're like, it'd be nice if it didn't do damage, but at the same time you want this to do damage, even though it's gonna do basically zero, uh, just because you want more counterattacks, right? 
So that's pretty sweet. So let's say you skill three somebody and two people counterattack. You've got 2,000 fixed damage onto your Blade of Vengeance. Uh, so what's this look like here? Okay, pretty sweet. And then Swift Cut. Okay, tax the enemy before recovering health of the caster. When used on the caster's turn, additionally inflicts 500 fixed damage. Okay, whether or not it hits. That's pretty nuts. Does the damage from the other one... How does that work? It's fixed, right? So it doesn't matter if it hits. So um, she'll be doing what, like 4,500 damage minimum just from her attack. So probably like 4,700 after her damage. And then she also has uh, Soul Burn for an extra turn. So she can pop somebody for 10k unavoidable, like flat damage. That's pretty sweet, right? I like that. It's a kid. It's a uh, 10 souls would have been way better though, because obviously 10k is not enough to kill a lot of people. Really cool, really cool. Okay, let's see the next one here. Sorry. And this one is Mui. Really a second Mui? Caleb Yen. I actually... I've never seen you before. I've not heard that name before. I don't know as many um, male VAs. Actually, I do know male VAs more because there seems to be less of them. Caleb Yen? Actor Squid Game. Cool. Who did he voice for Squid Game? Just additional voices? Uh, oh, the VIPs. Okay. Um, okay, so what else do we have here? Okay. Insane amount of stuff again. Another person focused on animes that looks like pretty much all TV. Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Rather new VA2. Really cool, really cool. Actually, I guess you wouldn't call 2018 new, right? Like, that's pretty recent. What brought you here? Your stats brought me here. Thank you. Muinin. Is that what they called him? Um, okay, so 1k attack, pretty decent attack, really low defense, so like a violet style defense, uh, pretty low HP, 23 crit chance, so uh, that's where a lot of their stats went. And the imprint is effectiveness, so this scares me, because especially with units like this, the three stars that I mentioned right at the start of the video, they have a big problem with uh, stats, right? And if you need a character that also needs crit rate and also needs effectiveness and also needs attack and also needs speed as a three star that's pretty impossible to do but uh cool wind cutter skill three attacks all enemies with a sword with a 50 percent chance up to 75 so can't be a dedicated cleaver because of that because obviously um you're missing 25 percent chance and you just lose a lot of those battles uh, also increases attack of the caster for two turns after, which is pretty sweet. And the burn is extra damage. Interesting. Interesting. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, we already saw this one, but let's watch it again. Yeah, that, that about tracks. <laughs> and after the foremost ally is attacked, oh no. I'm so bad. Foremost. Which one is that? Uh, counterattack with Blade Flurry. And when an al all allies are Ice Elemental Heroes, combat readiness of all allies by 10%. Blade Flurry takes priority over counterattack with a basic skill and can only be activated once every two turns. What is foremost? Attacks the enemy with a Sword Storm, decreasing attack for two turns. Interesting. The foremost ally is attack. Yeah, that all allies are ice is so random. Come on, let's see the animation so it can show who is getting hit. I mean, if it's AOE, they're getting hit. Okay, so foremost is the front, I guess. That makes sense. Okay, and then um, Leap Strike is 35% chance to bleed. That ain't it. Uh, up to 50% chance to bleed for uh, two turns. 
Okay, so he's got an interesting kit, but I don't think that's enough. But defense break AoE is pretty good. And this counterattack might have potential. And now we have Forte. To be my subordinate or to be my prey, which would you prefer? Aw, oh, Susie Young. I know you, girl. What else do you voice? Susie Young. I have heard your voice in many a game. Uh, okay, so we've got Jupiter Pokemon Evolutions. We've got uh, Yuffie in FF7 Remake. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one, folks. Um... Pumpkin Pie Cookie. That's where I knew her from recently. Pumpkin Pie Cookie is one of my favorite voices in that game. Also some Disgaea 6. I have not played that yet, but um, being in Disgaea is fantastic. Eula in Genshin Impact. See, this is, this is going to piss me off. If E7 in no way reaches out to this person to get them to advertise on Twitter to their bajillions of fan bases, oh, that'll make me mad. They better. They better because that is the VAs on Twitter get like more more likes and comments and and uh, retweets than anybody else on the entire Twitter. It feels like. Uh, so what else do we have here? King Hai and Langley and Azir Lane. Um, Juno and Fire Emblem Heroes. Cool. I'm really happy with this choice. Please be good. It's another what Earth Thief too. That's. That feels kind of bad, you know? Penin. Oh, Jesus Christ. She's got 125 speed. <laughs> okay. She's got no defenses, 125 speed, no attack. 35% base crit, which seems insane. And her imprint is flat attack, which is actually not terrible. This is going to be the first one I build for sure, obviously. She has high speed and cryptical chance. She <laughs> Okay, please be good. Please be good. When the caster is at max health at the start of the turn, grants perception, that's 15 crit rate, 15 crit damage, right? I forget how much it is, but I, I, I get the idea of what it is. Um, and after attacking, if the caster has perception, when the enemy is not... Oh, come on, just, just let her have it. It's... Just let her... What is the... What is the... What is the problem with giving her... Increased attack and an extra attack. What is the problem? Do you think Ort is going to break the game? Is that what you're doing? I don't understand. Um, also, activates the same skill as an extra attack. And can only be activated once every two turns. Okay, so would that mean she can activate her skill three twice? What's her skill three? This is really cool. I love this. I hate this. There's no reason to nerf units like this for PvE unless they completely break the game. There's no reason. Like, how dare somebody want to build a 3-star for PvE, you know? Come on. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Not much attack or not much damage there. And her skill one looked like it didn't do any debuffs either. Um, maybe it boosted her CR or something. And no mercy for the weak is a five turn cooldown, attacks the enemy with a swift sword storm, penetrates the target's defense by 30% when the speed of the caster is greater than the speed of the target, and it will be. And rate increases proportionate to the difference up to 70%. So she's going to have. 70% defense pen plus pen set. And she scales with speed. That's very important too. Okay, this is really cool. I think this has a lot of potential. I think five turns is a little too much unless there's a way to cycle it lower. And also to mention, if she does get the uh if she does get the uh skill two with the perception, she will use this twice, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Okay. 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 I think she's gonna be good. Uh, attacks in. Yeah, I figured her skill one basically just does nothing, right? 
It's all in on her skill three. And I think that's a little unfortunate. I think if there was a way to cycle into her skill three a little bit more, um, or it had a little bit lower cooldown, she'd have a lot of viability. Uh, as is, I think she's still going to be useful in places, but um, she's going to spend a lot of turns doing nothing, right? Like literally just attacking somebody for 4k and that's it. Um, interesting. And that also takes out the fun of like a dust devil, right? Interesting. Okay, yeah, so who's the next one? Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to try to bot people with that. <laughs> Your courage is admirable. I'll cut you in half. What a VA. Power above all is most important for a leader. Chris Turgliafera. This is a name I have not heard of. So, uh, Chris Turgliafera. Okay, known for... God of War, Elder Scrolls, Mad Dog, and Resident Evil. That sounds important. Um, Joji Hichiri in SMT3. Do not remember that person. Tank Top Tiger in One Punch Man. That's hilarious. Uh, that's hilarious. Laszlo in... Oh, I thought that said Epic 7. I was like... The heck is Laszlo? Uh in lots of stuff too. This is really cool. They they really went for some more known VAs for these three stars. Uh, which is always something I'm okay with, you know. World of Warcraft started out with Lupin the Third. Cool. Okay, so what do you do, Januta? Janotanen. Uh, so, really high attack, um, no HP, not really any defense, and crit chance. And he has crit chance imprint, too. Um, so, 34% crit. Yes, he is capable. So, Shatter here is his skill 3, the Fighting Spirit character. So, after, um, this is also 100 Fighting Spirit. I can't. Honestly, I don't use Fighting Spirit units. Do you start off with like a hundred? <laughs> or do you have to build it? Or does it depend on the character? I can't remember. Um, I think you have to build it first, right? So they can't use this at the start of the turn. Uh, attacks the enemy decreasing speed for two turns before increasing attack of the caster for two turns. When they're enraged, ignores ER. So, so weird to me you know like they give decrease speed ignores the ER out of all the things like yeah it does make them not need effectiveness but like that's the thing you give ignore ER, something inconsequential like that it's a great debuff but it's single target yeah it's single target and ruler of the prairie here after an ally is attacked the caster gains 10 fighting spirit per attack and has a 25% chance up to 35 to activate Hour of the Hunt only once every two turns. Hour of the Hunt increases speed of the ally for two turns and he becomes enraged. So essentially permanently enraged. Also, whenever um, somebody AoEs, if you're in Guild War, you're going to gain 30 fighting spirit or 40 in uh, PvP. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. AoE speed is not to be scoffed at. That is an incredibly powerful buff. And his skill one, I can't see it having real debuffs, right? Because they gave him ignores the R on skill 3, so you wouldn't need effectiveness. So is it going to do extra damage somehow, or combat readiness, or, or maybe it ignores the R if he's uh, enraged too? Uh, yeah, so no debuffs as expected here. And when enraged, uh, damage dealt is increased. So acquires 20 fighting spirit. So let's stay at the start of the turn. You... You're not going to have enough for a skill 3 first time, right? Are you? Oh, uh, you're probably yelling at me. I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, either way, I don't think you start off with, with any. Um, either way... Those are some pretty interesting units. Um, just a really quick spiel about them so far. I think uh, a couple of them actually have decent potential. 
but I think they might be hindered by base stats too much. Um, and then there's a couple others that have too long cooldowns and stuff like that, but these are all people I'm going to try. Obviously, I'm going to build uh, Yun Ryung and um, the five-letter word. Jazron, Tazron, Hazal, Hazal. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was five letters, uh, and I'll be building those three. And I don't think I was too interested in this thief. I forget their name as well, Mui. And uh, this guy is not my cup of tea, um, aesthetically or all of the things. Um, but I might give him a shot if I pull him. Uh, so let me know in the comments down there below what you think I should be building, how I should build them, and where you want me to use them. And I'll try to get them out pretty much right after uh, the patch drops so we can get an idea of how some of these might perform. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye, everybody.